Hello my friends, Takuya here, and welcome back to a Victoria 3 video. The game of a broken world with broken economics and many more broken features. And my friends, that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you today. And speaking of things being absolutely broken, you know, one of the most frustrating things about playing things for Victoria 3 is that when you're playing outside of Europe, it is noticeably significantly more difficult, as everything has a significantly lower literacy rate, typically and simultaneously is very far behind in terms of economics, in terms of laws, in terms of everything, and the unfortunate part is the further behind you are. Are, the more difficult it is to catch up. Russia is one of those states, something that has an immense amount of potential, but simultaneously is locked behind the horrible ideology of the totalitarian czar. And so a normal game of Russia usually involves having to slowly proceed, usually failing, through many of your reforms, struggling to try and turn Russia, which is a great power, into an actual usable great power. But what if I told you that we could completely reform Russia into a liberal marketplace, something that is able to effectively dominate the economy me the entire world with the untapped potential of Russia becoming a reality. Well, my friends, this is an absolutely broken strategy, and that's what I'm going to show you here today. But hey, guess what? Even if the government stops caring about you at all, do you know who might just help? Morgan and Morgan, and oh my god, I cannot believe that I'm making this transition right now. But genuinely, in comparison to what I'm doing with this country, yeah, you're likely to get more money off of them. Listen, my friends, when you're hurt, you deserve the best on your side. Your injury is something that could be worth millions. Because what normally happens is that insurance companies will often lowball clients' claims. Morgan Morgan will fight to get you the money that you deserve, and insurance companies know it. And I guess now you and pretty much every single person in Detroit or every major city where you see one of their billboards, they also know it. The reality of the situation is that when you are out there and you are fighting a big company, this is something that is going to take a big law firm to actually back you. And as America's largest injury law firm, they are ready to take on insurance companies of every single size. I think that we are all probably aware that many people will skip safety in order to just save a buck here and there. So if you've been injured or something has happened, then it only takes a few minutes to see if you actually have a case. And the fee is absolutely free unless you win. And so if you have been injured and want to start your claim, you can do so with a simple click by going to www.forthepeople.com slash Stakuyi. Thank you for sponsoring me, Morgan & Morgan, and now to legally destroy the world. Now, first off, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I am not the actual individual that came up with this strategy. The thing that I'm about to show you specifically comes from another YouTuber, Aldra Hill. Now, I'm definitely going to go and put his page up here right now so that you can actually see it. Definitely go like some of his videos, subscribe, and check it out because he makes some very good stuff. And the strategy of what he found here with Russia is so incredibly broken, and I just, I have to show it to you all. So as I said from the very beginning, politics-wise, Russia starts out in a unfortunate situation, largely. The gentry have overwhelming power with in society. Our leader is a traditionalist in a government that is almost entirely based around traditionalism, from traditionalism as the economic sense, to serfdom, to really the, the only thing that is kind of positive about us is that we at least, at least have slavery banned. But we are Russia, which means we have serfdom. When you combine that with the fact that we are heavily behind on technology, along with this being a ludicrously big country with poor market access, it means that we can pretty much do nothing over the course of our country. We are way behind in everything for taxes and our construction is horribly weak, this isn't good. Normally, the process of trying to reform anything within the government, which we can't really do right now with the exception of trying to create a dedicated police force, is we would need to, over time, slowly build up different elements within society, the capitalists, etc., in order to be able to gradually shift and reform the government. But here's the big kicker. The heir to our current leader, Tsarevik Alexander Romanov, is actually very interesting. Because at the age of 17, only this next year, he will be of age, and he will be a market liberal. So typically, what ends up happening over the course of a game is that you have to gradually build up Russia and then you will be able to usually reform much faster by the time that the 1860s, 1870s roll around. But we want to get this guy in charge of the country as rapidly as possible and here's how it is that we're going to do it. Let's see here. Basic economy wise, we are we're pretty behind pretty much all forms of production here. I can't even switch entirely over to wrought iron tools because I don't have the iron to actually produce any of this stuff. That is something that we're going to have to get. So construction sector, we're going to go from wooden buildings to to iron frame, which yes, it's expensive, but I do not care. And then immediately we're going to go around here and build a number of construction sectors. Three in Moscow, three in Ingria, just to build that up. 
And then Perm, yes, Perm can actually use some here as well, but five here. Technology-wise, the big thing that we have to shoot down here is we have to get Atmospheric Engine. The reason being is the Atmospheric Engine is going to allow us to actually get the basic pumps that are needed in order to mine things, and resources is something that, even though we are Russia, we are going to be hurting on for quite a while. We'll get that, the lathe, and then mechanical tools, just the basic stuff that we need to actually build up our economy. Simultaneously, on iron, we do not want to be exporting any of that whatsoever, so we are going to try and protect our domestic supply, and then we are going to proceed to build as many iron mines as possible. The thing about the beginning, unfortunately, is that because we don't really have railroads, we don't have anything, Russia does not have very good market access. So even though I can build, say, 50 different mines potentially in Perm, which, because we are Russia, we have stupid bonuses to our industry. Where is it? There it is. We have a lot of different bonuses to logging. We have bonuses to mining for our iron. More iron bonuses. We have stuff for coal, I'm pretty sure. Do we have coal? No, it's just iron. But either way, that is some stupidly big bonuses for us to have. So even though theoretically we should be able to fix all of our iron issues simultaneously, we can't because even if the price of iron is stupidly cheap in Perm and the Urals, um, simultaneously we, we're not, we're not going to get anything anywhere else. It's just, it, it will not apply. And the Urals and other states are also not incorporated, which is something that we are going to need to do. So first things first, we're going to go over here to state actions, incorporate states, and we're going to proceed to incorporate every single one of these in here. Make sure that we actually get our taxes going. I will though in turn build large amounts of these still in perm in order to drive down the price but simultaneously we will need to build up some in Sartov, in Tomsk, in a variety of different territories in order to be able to drive down the local cost because it's still since they, ever since they modified that you can't just drive down the cost by just spamming it in one province unfortunately. And with that all being done, we still have a lot of authority, so what we're going to use for this authority here in the first place is try and boost up our production in Moscow. We want road maintenance and also our, where is it, manufacturing, because this is going to be pretty much the only area where we can produce stuff in the beginning. Perm, of course, road maintenance and also resources, since this is going to be one of the most valuable things that we can do. And that leaves us with a mere 225 authority, or at least it would if we did not go over here to our government and stop trying to oppress the intelligentsia. That's going to give us 200 more authority that we can then proceed to use in order to promote social mobility in all of these territories that we're going to be rapidly trying to build up. Our education is absolutely pitiful, and so we're going to need to try our best. But anyway, on to the exploit, now that we have everything set up. The problem with things from the very beginning is that we can't exactly do anything just yet. We're going to raise taxes, and we are going to simultaneously wait until our heir, Tsarevich Alexander Romanov, is actually of age, which that will be on the 26th of April, 1836. Well, well, Davia wishes to enter an alliance with us. Sure, yeah, I guess, why Why not? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Simultaneously, I want to try and improve relations with the varying powers around me here as much as possible. Britain, I do not want to see me as a threat. Austria, I do not want them to see me as a threat. And the Qing, well, really, who gives a shit about the Qing? Instead, you can see that the price of iron is now rapidly surging, so what I'm going to need to do is start importing that into my country. And I missed the date by just a few days here, because now it's April 29th. But either way, our heir, Tsarevich Alexander, somehow made managed to grow a full set of facial hair here in just a, just a few months. Wow, that's an incredible job for you there, buddy. You are meticulous, you are romantic, you are a market liberal, and your interest is still in the gentry assembly, so this is what you are a part of. Excellent. We want this individual to be in charge of our country, but unfortunately for us, we can't really do that the easy way. We can't have good old daddy just go ahead and step down. So what we are going to do is something extremely simple. We're going to go to our government, we're going to reform it, and we're going to put something like, uh, I don't know, the intelligentsia also into power, which yes, it's going to make it an unacceptable government, but it's it's perfectly fine. We are going to do so, which is going to give us laws that we are going to be able to pass, namely the reformation of serfdom to put down to homesteading. Now, obviously, as you can see from the bottom left in here, there is no way in hell that the gentry would ever actually allow this. And apparently neither the Orthodox Church, but we're going to select it anyway. All we have to do now is go ahead and wait for a day to pass, and oh, oh, the gentry assembly is quite angry with us. This has pissed the people off within our government so badly that it now gives us the special option of going over here and abdicating the throne. Nikolai Romanov will die, we get a special event, abdication, and lo and behold, in 1836, in April, the market liberal reformer is now on the throne. We then have the option of hosting a private elite coronation or a grand public coronation, and I really want the people to like me, so 1% of pops in Russia become more loyalists, which is going to affect significantly more than just 10% of aristocrats. So we are, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. 
Because with that, we now get the event, the Ascension of Alexander II. With the end of Nicholas I's reign, Alexander Romanov has ascended to the Russian throne as Alexander II, Tsar of all the Russians. His reign is hoped by many liberal bureaucrats to hail a new era of reform. Alexander Romanov becomes known as the Great Reformer, which is going to increase the strength of aristocrats and bureaucrats and give us more bureaucracy. Simultaneously, market liberal characters are more likely to appear in Russia for the duration of Alexander Romanov's reign. This is amazing. This is easily one of the best things that we could have, but there's still a little bit of a problem. Even though Alexander is now going to be in charge, simultaneously, the issue that we are going to face, the Gentry Assembly is still quite angry at us. The person who is in charge of it is a traditionalist, and because the leader of the Gentry is a traditionalist, any of these liberal laws that we try to pass, it's immediately going to be met with resistance. So we have to get rid of the guy. To that end, we need to make Alexander Romanov the leader of the Gentry Assembly. In order to make any of that happen, we're going to need to try and reduce his rivals as much as possible, so we are going to go through all of our generals and any single one that is part of the traditionalists. Armed forces, ah, there we go, Gentry Assembly, here we are. Retire as commander, which yes, it's going to really piss off the Gentry Assembly, I understand that, but it doesn't matter. Remove him, where's another one, here we go. Remove you, and technically speaking, we could keep you because your ideology is a reformer, but just for the sake of having our leader be in charge because I really want it, we're gonna go ahead and remove you too. All of these varying leaders, we are going to kick out of power in both the army and simultaneously in the navy because we need to reduce their political clout to as much as possible. The way that Ayr's system works in this game is that it is something that is kind of random, but also weighted. So the popularity of a character, the rank of a character, the power of a character, all these things are going to determine the chance at which they are going to become the leader of a party, like in the case of the Gentry Assembly, like the leader of this government group. And so you could still have like a 70 or 80 or 90% chance for the guy that you want to be in charge to become in charge, but still the guy with 10% could also take it. You don't really know. It's I, We haven't really figured that part out yet. But by removing all of these rivals, when we go over here to reform the government and then subsequently kick the gentry out of the government, we can then use that as an opportunity in order to try and replace the leader, which we will then have the option afterwards of exiling him as a dissident. But first to that end, we need to improve the popularity of our leader. So the special interaction that we are going to get is to seek royal marriage, a special thing that only monarchs are actually able to do. And then we can choose one of these varying princesses in order to become our bride. In this case, we just made that alliance with Moldo or with Moldavia. So, you know, I'll, I'll do you. I'll, I'll do you. There we go. Quickly go over here and cancel homesteading. We're going to need to remove that real quick. Wait for another day to pass. The gentry are no longer radicalized because we are not trying to pass homesteading anymore. And it gives us an event, the Royal Wedding. With the Royal Wedding, we now have two options where we can invite only the people of the highest social standing, which gives us more influence, or a grand public wedding that will placate the mass. Yes. This will give us 25 popularity, so naturally speaking, of course, we are going to do that. That means that I can now go over here, kick out the gentry, and then immediately upon doing so, go over here and exile him as a dissident. Now, there's a chance, a chance, mind you, when this occurs, that Alexander will not be the guy that takes charge. That, that, that can very well happen. This means you'll simply have to reload, go back, start over, but considering that this is happening in the very beginning of the game, it's still ridiculously powerful. And in exiling him, yeah, see, here, first time we did this, got a pacifist. We go and try again, and this time we get a jingoist. Yeah, this is, this may take a while. And there we go, finally, third time's the charm. Tsar Alexander Romanov is now the guy in charge. As I said, this is something that is going to take a little bit of time, but you know what, it's perfectly fine when that happens. And now the unfortunate thing, though, is that every Every single person within the government really still hates us, and it's an illegitimate government that can't actually pass any laws. But check it out. We go and reform the government so that only the gentry are in charge. And oh, what's this? We have a 100% righteous government again. It only makes the gentry assembly angry with us. And then afterwards, wait for the week to tick by so that resets our laws. And then, oh, lo and behold, the gentry are now market liberal reformists that give me the option of replacing serfdom with tenant farmers. And that makes them happy with a 58% chance to succeed. The only ones that will be against this are the orthodox. Orthodox Church, every single other group will love us, and it is practically guaranteed to pass because, again, the gentry are now on our side and not opposing us. Now, of course, because this is all happening, we don't want people to hate the gentry, so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce taxes here because we're going to put them on medium level so that, naturally speaking, the government is able to maintain a little bit more authority. And look at this. All of the groups, all the marginalized groups, everything are happy. The intelligentsia are going to be loyal to us. And now, my friends, we can actually build an economy. Yes, my authority is sadly weakened here, which means I don't really want that to be below 
slow. I'm probably going to have to take some of the stuff off here in the first place here for a little bit. There, cancel social mobility. That's fine. And also, Kiev will do the same thing. We want this to be in the positives authority because that just means that we can pass laws faster. And with less opposition, now the Orthodox Church and the armed forces, they are not moving against me. And because we are now building ourselves up an economy, simultaneously, what I can do is actually utilize my military in order to do things. So, hey, Persia, do you, um, do you want to become my puppet then? Yeah, I'm sure you do. United States, now why would you declare Russia your rival? Listen, just because we are the true market liberal successors does not mean that you need to do that. Tenant farmers now successfully passing to the consideration phase, and with that, we can start to adding on extra requirements to Persia. Hopefully, see, I want them to just back down. I don't want to have to actually fight them because that's just going to waste significantly more time. So we're going to demand war reparations. We're going to demand all these things. And hopefully they won't be that much of a fool. Nope, it looks like they are going to. We are going to go to war. It's fine. Russia drastically outnumbers them, which means that we're going to do just fine. And tenant farmers is successfully passing to the adoption phase. In the meantime, our iron mines are drastically building up production all across the country. And Pr Prussia, hey, Prussia, now why would you do that? Why would you declare me your rival? That's not fair. Not very nice, my friend. And with that, we have tenant farmers. Tenant farmers is nice because it's going to unlock new production methods, and simultaneously it's going to reduce the power of the gentry, which I say that it is being a nice thing overall. Technically speaking, we still want the gentry to have power because it's thanks to the gentry that we will be able to pass many different things, such as getting rid of traditionalism. I can now go from traditionalism, which really hurts my taxation capacity and really hurts the contribution of basically any kind of real powers in my country to do anything in the first place. And I can instead immediately switch over to laissez-faire if I wanted to, which allocates 75% of construction to private construction and drastically increases the amount of investment that comes from capitalists. My friends, we are having a monarchical capitalist Russia with an absolute power czar that simultaneously has no control over the economy whatsoever. It's going to be a very interesting system, I'm telling you that much. And yes, the Russian armies are going to completely overwhelm everything. We're going to war reparations, we're going to have them revoke their claims, we're going to make them a protector and we're going to have them ban slavery. Honestly, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. And at least by adding in the war reparations, it means that we can kind of pad our economy while we're busy trying to pass all these varying laws and then eventually build up everything else. As soon as that is complete, the next thing that we're going to do is go after Kiva and basically every single thing that is over here in Central Asia. In doing so, hopefully some of these nations will realize that there is literally no point in resisting and we'll just give up. If they do so, it means that we can just move on that much faster. Are you going to give up? No? You're going to make me fight you too? You little shit. I'm trying to make a fair liberal market society here and you're just interfering with my plans. Yeah, see, just like that. Literally two months later, you're done. And yep, there goes Kiva then. Next up after that... Bukhara. Trade, uh, 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 no, no trade agreements for you, Austria, because there is no control over trade. This is a liberal economy, laissez-faire, founded on the principle of comparative advantage, and fewer government interventions means greater growth. That is right. I'm going to lose basically all control over my own building that I'm trying to do and allocate all of it to the capitalists. Beautiful. In doing so, that's going to allow me to establish a new company, and what I'm going to want to do is, let's see, Russian metals or forestries? Honestly, the most money that I'm probably going to make is from forestry, so I mean, in terms of bonuses that it gets provided, I would love to have more throughput that comes here from my wood. Because Russian metals really only provide stuff for steel mills, while this, forestry is going to help me a lot more. And look at that. Look at the money. Look at how much this soars because of investment from capitalism. That's right, baby. Russia is going to take the world stage. Now, let's see. With laissez-faire done, as well as tenant farmers, I can't exactly do much else here, even though I would love to get commercialized agriculture, but I do not have mutual funds yet. I need to do something. And so to that end, what I really want to get is either national militia or professional army, but we're going to have to go and revise our politics at least a little bit at this point. Maybe if I go and put the Orthodox Church in here, that will allow me to get the next thing with schools. Yes, okay, everyone approves of it. No one is against it. I don't really have the bureaucracy right now in order to be able to do anything, but, you know, it's perfectly fine. We still want the aristocrats to be able to do things. And oh boy, are my loyalists climbing. Oh, and at least you car went and back down from the diplomatic play. That's perfect for us. That means we've secured these three, and then the final one that we can do this to is Cochland. And honestly, the crazy thing is, I am making a ridiculous amount of money, and a lot of this is from investments. So, theoretically, what it is that we could do right now at this point is increase our construction sectors even more, because the amount of investment that we're going to be getting into this from laissez-faire is insane. And Cochland backs down, which means what we have managed to do is take control of the entirety here of Central Asia, at least we can. Unfortunately, because puppets aren't really a thing for us right now, because we can't do that just yet, we will not be able to go and make Persia our puppet until 1842. And therefore, the next course of action should be theoretically to go and take out Circassia and others, but... 
Unfortunately, we have truces with them for at least the next 30 days. Okay, it looks like we're going to be sitting here and chilling for a bit. In fact, my god, I'm actually about to cap all this out. Okay, hold up, hold up. We don't need all this money here then, which sounds so weird to say. Okay, we're going to remove our liquor tax consumption. In addition to that, maybe lower taxes? More legitimacy for me and simultaneously make everyone happy. The more people that can afford our goods, the more powerful that we're going to be. Well, at the same time, with all this money, that means we can start cranking out as many universities in here as we possibly can. The more of those that we get, the more education we have, the more education we have, the better the population, the better population, the more that we take over. Because now we have religious schools, and oh my god, I am wasting so much tax from this now. 33%. My god. Yes, I'm putting the Orthodox Church with a little bit more power, I understand that, but it's kind of what it is that I have to do for the time being. Because with that all passed, now we can go and reform the government yet again, and should we kick the Orthodox Church out and maybe put it in the military? Yes, I think that we would. Yes, it's going to annoy the Orthodox Church to be out, but to be honest, I don't need the authority in here right now. So it is what it is. With that, that means that we are going to be able to get professional army, I think. Beautiful. And mind you, for anyone who is watching this right now, it is October 21st, 1839. We have already managed to get laissez-faire, all right? We have tenant farmers, though we're probably going to need to fix that here soon as well. We have religious schools, so we have some education, and we're trying to fix our army now. Really, the only thing that I have to get rid of after this is hereditary bureaucrats to hopefully go down to appointed bureaucrats, and we will be significantly better. The Egyptian Ottoman crisis. Yes, we do need to keep an eye on this region, absolutely. A few pointed comments from- uh, Oh, no, no. Well, that is unfortunate. But on the other hand, we now have atmospheric engine. Beautiful. That is going to be massive for us because that in turn means... Oh, that's going to hurt our coal production here, actually. Hold on. Am I producing any coal? I'm not producing hardly any coal. That's not a good thing. Hold on. Like, yes, yes, yes. I know I want administration, but I also need coal now here before I go and do anything else. Otherwise, that's going to be a major problem for me. Because now I simultaneously have stock exchange, which will allow me... Wait, hold on. Can I get free trade? Oh, as soon as I finish this off, I may be able to do something even better. Finally, professional army has successfully progressed to the consideration stage. This is going to be taking forever here. This is like the first time I've ran into any difficulty doing anything here. But with 1841 rolled around, that means we can finally go over here and just return these states here to our fold. And like that, Circassia conquered. Next up here, the Caucasian Imamate. Okay, professional army is just continuously failing, and I, I don't appreciate this. You know what? We're going to switch over to some other stuff. I can pass a ton of other things way faster, I'm sure. Such as per capita taxation. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that done then. Don't know if it'll actually work, but my god, we can try. Even as we break out into war and immediately conquer them. And with that, the Caucasian inmate is done. Russia is unified. Our next step, of course, is going to be to reduce the autonomy of all the powers around me. Persia will accept, which is beautiful. And that makes them my dominion rather than my puppet. But you know what? It's fine. I can do the same thing to Kiva. And then Bukaro. Wait, how long is that here? Five weeks left until I can do that one. Yeah, yeah, nope. Per capita taxation fails. Okay, well, that's... Yeah, that's not going to work. I could, if I wanted to, go to free trade, which is incredibly powerful if I want to be able to import large amounts of goods, but I don't really have the bureaucracy in order to be able to account for that, even though it would kind of reduce the amount of cost for the trade. Hmm... Nope, nope, I, I'm barely having any bureaucracy cost from trade. That's not worth it right now. Instead, we were going to hold off. If I wanted to, I could go for landed voting, but do I actually want to do that at this point? I don't know. I can't really afford anything else, and I kind of want some other parties to get in power. Uh, you know what? Yes, we are going to reform. We're going to try. Let's see if we can get landed voting. We're inside of the Austrian diplomatic pl Oh, Austria. Good luck to you, buddy. Yeah, I'm not involved in anything. Russia is a, Russia is a state of peace, my friends. Patronize romanticism complete. Wait, what? When did I get romanticism? Well, either way, I guess it doesn't matter. Our economy is skyrocketing at this point production-wise, but I still need more support. So to that end, Afghanistan, do you, uh, do you want to be my puppet? Yeah, and Afghanistan immediately backed down. Wow, that was actually quite fast. This is the autonomy of Kokolan. That is good. And then Kalat, how about you? At this point, what am I sitting at, infamy-wise? Only 33. I could actually afford to take quite a lot. Egypt, wait, what? what is... When did Ottomans... Did you trade a large section of the Middle East to... Why? Why does... What? Galant, you are not going to back down. Okay, well, I guess they we're going to go to war with you then. Oof, I am I am losing a good amount of money. Okay, uh, we are we are wasting a lot of taxes here, it seems. And Kalant conquered. Beautiful. And finally, 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 we get Central Archives. Okay. Dang, the fact that we got that here in 1845 still again is huge. We have, I mean, literacy is very hard to come by here when you're playing as Russia, but the fact that we're doing it as quickly as we are is massive. Because now I can switch all of these systems, which is going to cost a huge amount of paper here, to be fair, but it's going to drastically increase my bureaucracy as well as my taxation capacity. And that's almost entirely fixed my tax issues. And intensive agriculture too, yes! 
By unlocking that means increased wool gathering. That means butchering tools for more production here. We make more meat. Well, we don't necessarily need that here just yet because that's more tools. But we can produce a massive amount of goods and that is the important part here. And with that done, how about we go down here and uh, perhaps consolidate things with Macron? Well, looks like they, um, they, they didn't want to accept that. And now we finally have landed voting. Beautiful. Okay, that means that we're actually going to start having some elections. As Russia in 1846? Look at us. Look at us go. Unfortunately, that does mean that I have a contested government, so I will actually probably have to wait for an election here. Yeah, 160 days to determine what happens. It's okay. Reform the governor. No, wait. We became a righteous government. Hey, would you look at that? So what could I do then here? Elected bureaucrats, 21% chance. Well, no, the gentry won't like that. What about professional army? They will oppose that, but not as badly, and I really do want to get rid of peasant levies. This is absolutely terrible. Let's try it once again. And now finally, I can start to develop a steel mill. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, -ho, hey, Russia has finally figured out banking. That's new. And now I can reduce the autonomy of all these puppets even further. Now, instead of just dominions, they are my actual puppets. Beautiful. And finally, finally, we now have professional army. That is, that is beautiful. Okay. All right. With that being done, are there any laws other than this that we could potentially get? No, we still have religious schools. All that is done here. Home affairs. I can't afford anything else. I could try to go for elected bureaucrats, but that is going to end up pissing off the gentry assembly. I could go for per capita taxation though. That, that might actually help me. And finally, finally. Finally, we get railways. 1850. That is actually great technological development here for us. Because with that, that means I can go with empiricism. And then after that, hopefully get perhaps dialectics. Yes, the more I get this, the more education I can get. And then we can start rapidly developing all of our stuff here for government administration. We need to get an educated population. Am I? Am I genuinely running out of wood? Russia. Russia is running out. Of no, 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 no. Wait, did that say that the Ottomans were part of the Austrian market? Are you genuinely Ottomans? are in a custom union with Aust I have never seen that happen before. What the hell? And hey, fi oh my God, the Octoberist party. That is so much power. Good on you, man. Good on you. Now we now have the church, the armed forces, and the nobility all in charge and happy. Guess what? The industrialists are super happy with us. The intelligentsia is super happy. The only ones that really don't like us are the trade unions. But then again, you know, the Russian trade unions never like anyone. And we now have per capita taxation, which is going to drastically increase our overall income. That means we're going to be able to develop even more construction. Some more construction. More. Give me more wait hold on hold on formal petition to pass industry ban. what do you mean industry banned on what what no no we're not banning industry how would that be a thing no if anything you know what we're doing we're passing elected bureaucrats that's what we're doing we're getting you all out out of power i don't care this may piss off the gentry but at this point i no no i don't care and dialectics, beautiful. Whoa, 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 wait. Alexander Romanov has grown discontent with the Russian government's institutions. Oh, oh, oh holding. Wait a damn minute. This, well, he's my, he's the ruler. What do you mean that my ruler is planning a coup against my own government? How does that make any sense? And finally, I can go up an institution level here. Yes, it's going to strengthen the Orthodox Church, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. You know, we might have a capitalist mo monarchy. Authoritarian monarchy? Does that even make sense? I don't know if that even makes sense. Oh my god, France, the French capitalist revolt. Oh, you are on fire. Good luck to you. You want something? No, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You, you have some fun though. Okay, elected bureaucrats is clearly not working. Um, we're, we're gonna have to get rid of that here for at least a while. And the coup attempt fizzles out. Democracy is saved. Yes, yes. And also we've discovered banking, which is even better for us here. Oh, what the? The heavenly kingdom won. But life of me, I have never actually seen that happen. The heavenly kingdom actually won? What? Now, Sick Empire, what do you say you um <clears throat> become my puppet then? That seems like a perfectly willing, willing, reason reasonable thing for you to be willing to do. Yes. There we go, surround the Sick Empire on all sides. And the more that we can take out these territories and turn them into our puppets, the less that we have to contend with. All of them will provide units for our armies in order to be able to defend our varying borders. And simultaneously, the less that India or I say the British, are likely to interfere. And once again, no one is joining, meaning I'm going to be able to crush right through all of these very easily. And now finally, we can start to upgrading all of these things. Beautiful. And we can unlock a National Guard, which will hopefully begin to suppress all the varying people that are trying to rise up against us. Because no, no, you're not going to fight against your capitalist monarchist overlords. British East India Company side with Sindh. Whoa, 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 whoa. British East India Company. British East India Company? Now why would you do that? 
Yeah, British East India Company, if you're going to fight against me, I'm just going to have you um, transfer all of your subjects to me. Thank you. Oh, can I not, can I not do more? No, I only have 16 left. Okay, uh, war reps, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that seems like a reasonable course of action. Let's go with that. Wait, did they back Did they back down? Send backs down. Because <laughs> uh, the East India Company had an uprising here in Hindustan. Ah, uh, you little shit. You little shit. You thought that you could do that to me. Uh, uh, uh. Nope. And with Russia with an education level of three, we actually still have the bureaucracy to be able to support the national laws if we get that. Sardinia pinned him at the sides with Switzerland against radical Switzerland. Um, well, that's new. And it's crazy. My GDP is actually skyrocketing well ahead of Britain and everything else. I'm doing remarkably well as Russia. I suppose at this point, the only thing to really do over here is to start consolidating all of my positions. Backed by a great power, United Principalities has requested a sliver of territory in Bessarabia. N no, it's it's mine. No. What happened to Moldova? Yeah, yeah, Kishizus, you're, um... You're immediately getting conquered, buddy. That's not working out in your favor now, is it? No, 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 it's not. But with that now absorbed, that means, uh, Ortizus? Yeah, you're getting annexed as well. You also refused. And now we can launch some charity hospitals. How beautiful. Beautiful. Lovely support. Support for the people. Much happiness. And now, oh my god, wow, that would drastically increase the cost of grain. Hold the damn phone. Is grain? Grain is not all that cheap in comparison. What the hell? It will double the amount of grain purchasing power that's required. Okay, it doesn't increase all that much in comparison. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to increase that anyway. And at the same time, canneries reduce that cost. That's fine. Once again, the Octoberus reign supreme righteous government, baby. Russia can't be stopped. No, oh, whoa. Okay, that's um that cost way more bjarks than I anticipated. Okay, that's not good. Whoa, whoa, what is this? Uh they're trying to sway us. They will bankroll uh, uh bankroll. <laughs> we will be back them in the You want to bankroll? Dude, my economy is so much bigger than yours. What, what, why would you? You know what? Sure, I'll take that. It might bankrupt you, but sure, I'll do it. Yeah, I um, I, I don't know how well this is actually going to go for him, but you know what? Okay, wait a minute. They're going to bankroll me over the course of the... That's what it is. Oh, they're going to drastically increase my economy. Hey, you're going to build up some reserves for me. You know what? I'll accept that. I'll accept this because afterwards, I'm going to skyrocket my own economy, baby. The longer this war drags on, the more into debt Austria goes, and the more into debt they go, the more money I make in reserves. So you know what? Let's just get some more construction going then. I think that's perfectly fine. Austria is in default. They'll be more likely to capitulate. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Yeah, they were bankrolling me the entire time. So yeah, that's that's probably going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and cancel all these construction sectors that I was about to start building. Yeah, just going to leave that because they, uh, they they probably couldn't afford the 100,000 I'm sure that it was costing me. Actually, no, they, they, they completely broke them. To, oh, wait a minute. That's why I'm not making anything. Huh, well, we won, but um, now they're no longer bankrolling me. Unfortunate. And now that all that is done, sick empire. Ha, ah, ah, yeah, yeah. You're probably, probably not going to like this very much. Yep, figure that you would not accept. The ruler of the East. Wait, what do you mean ruler of the East? Our ambition of becoming a Pacific naval power and our colonial agenda in Central Asia require that we resolve our long-standing border disputes with the... <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. I get claims on all this now. I get claims on all this and I have a reputable reputation. Oh, Asia, you're mine. Russian GDP now number two in the world. Oh my God, we surpassed the British Raj. The only one left is the Heavenly Kingdom. I gotta say, I am really enjoying laissez-faire because I have not had to manage nearly as much of my economy as I've had in other games. This is significantly easier to be able to balance everything. This is this is actually quite fun. And more important than anything else, we can now finally start upgrading all of our military units. No longer is Russia going to be weak. Is it gonna be expensive? Yes, oh my God, yes it is. But we're finally gonna have a system, baby. Her Britain side of the Prussia and the diplomatic play against Austria. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Hey, 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 guys. Calm the hell down, please. Yeah, I'm not joining in in any of this crap. Uh-uh. Nope. Holy crap, I think I'm actually basically out of money here. Huh. That's, uh, that's interesting. I did not actually expect that to be happening. And we have crested, oh, wait, no, down, uh, come on, back up. A hundred million GDP, April 29th, 1866, baby. Beautiful. So you know what? All right, I think it's time to start taking on the great big evil. Hmm, honestly, I'm looking at the Russian companies here now that I can get a new one. And Russia's companies really are not that powerful. They're not. The only thing in here that I even really qualify for is the minus 10% radicals from standard of living decreases, which I mean, I guess... Everyone's happy with cheap Russian clothes then, I guess. So I guess we might as well finally start getting some police, because amazingly as Russia, we haven't had that the entire time. And uh, as that is all happening, 
Uh, Heavenly Kingdom, can I can I order you to um, return all this for me here? Thank you, thank you. I, I I really appreciate it. I totally love all of your help that you're providing. Here we go, here we go. We outnumber them. All right, time to start adding some war goals. Once you return states, Erga, I will also take that off of you. Ulai Stai, Northern Manchuria, and um, Southern Manchuria. Yes, thank you. Can also make sure to add all of these as primary war goals, and at least I have added some of those. Maybe I should have avoided one of those just to add, make safe. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully they don't back down. Otherwise, they're going to have to give me quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> China went and gave up. And in giving up, they gave up a huge amount of territory. Okay. Um. Well, I didn't quite expect them to give up everything, but that's exactly what they went and did. And it barely cost me any reputation whatsoever. Like that was, that land was cheap. And now we have secured the entirety of this. Wait, rule of these. Why do we have not this completed? Owns all of Kyrgyzia. Wait, oh, that's Cochlin. Oh, or Kokend. Okay, all right. Hey, sorry, buddy. Buddy, we got to annex you. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, buddy, buddy, listen, forgive me, forgive me. I want success, damn it. And there is dedicated police force. That means less radicals, less everything, and, oh, well, I mean, I, I am out of bureaucracy again. So, I mean, there's that. And our GDP skyrockets to 113. Wait, is, is typing? Heavenly Kingdom is still number one. Oh, my God. Okay, well, we, we need to drastically reduce you. We need to cut you down to size a little bit there, good sir. But with Copeland conquered, that means the rule of the East successfully completed. By securing out of Manchuria, the dream of Russian naval domination of the Pacific has come closer to reality. The city of Vladivostok will become our new primary port in the East. Rebase the Siberian flotillas with all due haste. The Port of Vladivostok will be one of the finest in the nation. So more for industrialists. Port throughput. Wait, what else does it get? 2% of upper strata become more loyalist. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we, we want the... Uh... Naval base in Outer Manchuria, naturally. And oh my God, we are raking in so much cash. We have so much construction. We have so much everything. You know what that means, right? Even more construction. Egypt is embargoing us. Ha ha ha. Yeah, it doesn't matter, buddy. What is this? Secession movement? No, 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 no. We're going to want to go ahead and try to assimilate these people as much as possible then. French Republic has announced its intentions to expand towards its natural borders from the Atlantic to the Rhine. Oh my God. All right. Well, that's going to be spicy then. And Romania. Hello. You are now a thing and a tributary of the Ottomans, which currently have an alliance with Austria. Hmm. I don't like that on my border. No, no, no. Hey, 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 hey. That is not nice. You have quite literally no power here whatsoever. What are you even doing? That makes no sense. I'm also making so much money that I don't need any of this stuff. We're going to put taxes on the lowest level possible. In 1869, Russia is going to achieve true happiness. Well, actually, that reduced mine to the point that I'm losing money right now. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We're going to keep it low anyway. Wait, hold on. What is this? Condense? Yeah, Matt, you, you really shouldn't have done that. You really, really should not have done that. The uprising is, of course, absolutely crushed. Austria, you want to sway me to your side? You're facing another revolt again. What's the offer? Another bankroll? Do I take? No. No, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to decline. Let you have some fun with that. Whoa, contest. How have we dropped down to a contested government? And how is the Orthodox Church the most power? Oh, wait a minute. It's, oh, ah, uh, it's, it's the clergy and it's all the religious school stuff. We've been, we've been increasing their power the entire time. I forgot. We have both religious schools and a health system here that is, d yeah, plus 50% power to the Orthodox Church. That's a little bit of a problem. Oh my Lord. I completely forgot about that. I was researching concrete. Okay. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our construction is a little bit monstrous here now. And the Octoberist Party. Oh my god. The church is actually taking over. The church is legit taking over. Now we have the industrialists working with the monarchists who are working with the church that has overwhelming authority. <sighs> Wait, Prussia, Prussia is losing? <laughs> Prussia is losing against France. Oh my god, I would love to see that. I would love to see that here. That could be great. Yeah, even though they're declaring themselves to be my rival. Some social reformers among the intelligentsia have spoken out against proposed poor laws, viewing them as an attempt to make poverty itself a crime. Well, yeah, it, it is. They're, they're a burden on society. Duh. That's why I want to help them. I am losing a lot of money here, though. And now I finally have free trade. Beautiful. That means all of my businesses should become significantly easier in order to be able to get goods, even if I'm actually losing a ton of money. Money here, but at least we have joint stock companies. Russian gold, ooh, plus 5% minting and plus 5% loyalists from standard of living increases. That's nice. 
Or I could just get plus 10% loyalty from the home goods. Look, as much as I want minting, that loyalty is going to be incredibly powerful here for me, I think. I will more than likely need to raise taxes here somewhat soon, I think, though. Really? Really? Criminal or... Uh, okay. Um, damn it. That's going to hurt us even more. I actually am going to need to raise taxes here. So I don't want to, but I... If I go to war, I need to have at least a little bit of a surplus. Oh, the Northern German Confederation. Hey, wait a damn minute. That is looking pretty extensive over here, if I do say so myself. And they are about to go to war. Oh, it's the Alsace-Lorraine War. All right, what's going to happen? No one's offering any support. Nope, it's just Germany versus France. What are we going to see? Because we have mutual funds unlocked, and that means... Wait, public trading? Hold up. Public trading means even more capitalists. More capitalists means more investments. Oh, you know it. You know that everything, everything is going to be publicly traded. Absolutely. The more capitalists we have the more investments that we get beautiful oh my god i'm making so much money in fact you know what okay we can go down in taxes again we don't need this and we now have commercialized agriculture beautiful and that cultural oh wow hey hold on that is a lot of support for that hold on I thought we were a supremacist society. What is going on here? Cultures will be accepted if they share a cultural trait. Ah, uh, I know it has to be the primary. You know what? We've taken over more territory. Cultural exclusion is actually probably going to be significantly better for us. It'll drastically increase our loyalty. You know what? Everyone can be Russian if they try hard enough and if they buy our goods. Oh, and beautiful. We have dynamite. With dynamite, that means significantly better production over here, right? Breach loading artillery. Beautiful. With that being done... That means I have to go in here and manually upgrade each and every single one of my troops. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. I wish there was a button that I could just go down here and like every available troop upgrade, but no, Victoria 3 just does not, does not have that yet. And there we have it. October 1st, 1879. Russia is the number one GDP in the world. Are we the number one power? No, we're still technically behind what? The Great Britain? Yeah, but we're catching up. My God, wait a minute. Did France win that war? And now Germany is about to fight them again. Oh, oh boy. That's not good. Finally, with repeaters, that means I'm going to be able to get hand crank machine guns. And as soon as we have that, oh, steam donkey. Steam donkey, how beautiful. No. <laughs> Oh, the Ottoman Empire is getting absolutely destroyed. Wait, is it only 17 million in terms of GDP? Really? Who are they even at war with? Customs unit, alliance with Austria. Oh yeah, no, no, no. That's that's not going well. Oh, Ottomans, you uh you're being forced to release powers, you know. Maybe I want a piece of that here myself. A foreign manifesto. What the uh, wait, what what? For an act of not autocracy. Wait a minute. Our struggle is an international one, sure. Well, hey, Heavenly Kingdom, do you, uh, do you think you want to join me here now? Yeah, yeah, I think you do. I want to add on Monen, Ulustai, Zingaria. Now, if they go and refuse me, well, it's all going to go to shit for you then. Oh, buddy, 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 buddy. You ought not to have refused me. And with war breaking out against the Heavenly Kingdom, we want to try and take this out as quickly as possible, which means instead of trying to fight across this vast expanse, we're just going to, you know, naval invade their capital, which is down here in the south, because it's the Heavenly Kingdom. That'll take about three months, which is not too long. So in the meantime, we can fight and distract their forces up here as much as possible. Oh, damn it. Really? Finnish bourgeoisie revolt. Now that is just rude, good sir. Oh, very quickly, naval invade. Come on, come on, break in. Break in as quickly as possible. Are you serious? They're going to defend Tibet that that quickly. Really? Why? Why would you do this? What, what, Tibet, why would you go against me like that? I mean, you're just weakening your own front line over on this side, which is going to allow me to flex and push in further. All in a desperate bid to try and defend your capital. You're literally taking half of your army down there in order to try and defend against it. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll accept it. I am desperately fighting my way through the country. And in the meantime, the Heavenly Kingdom is still continuously trying to defend this territory as I'm just throwing throwing troops away. <laughs> They're desperately trying to defend their capital. All right, how about we try another naval invasion immediately next to it? Because this just seems to want to continuously want to fail because we can't seem to land in anything. <laughs> oh my God. Why is this so incredibly frustrating and hard? All right, trying once again. We now have no war support. I've taken half the country and I can't do anything because of this freaking naval invasion system. Okay, I could make peace and technically take Tuva, which would cost hundreds of thousands of lives all for this shit. No, we're still going, man. Heavenly Kingdom is in default. Oh, 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 they're out of money. They're out of money. They have no way to pay for anything. Please, please, for the love of God, let me do this. They have no actual way to pay for their troops, so we're just going to keep on pushing into the country. Come on, come on, push, 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 push in, please. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Don't, don't go against me. No, no, <laughs> I hate the slide bars. 
Oh, the slide bars. The slide bars of doom. I don't care if every single person in this country becomes exhausted. I don't care. I am taking it, damn it. If I gotta paint the entire map, me, I will do it. Yuli Peasant Revolt. No, 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 no. Where? Over here. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're taking out, we're taking out all of China here, buddy. All right, look, we're going to wait for the forces to kind of distribute themselves among the rest of the country here. This is fine. And I am once again launching another naval invasion. Oh, <gasps> I finally managed to break in. I finally, wait, where, where did I win? Where did I, where did I break in? Where did I do it? Oh, wait, it's because I took over the other stuff. Hold up. 1.6 million casualties. <gasps> oh, they're about to capitulate. Everything is about to collapse for them. Four years of war. Four long years of war and we did it oh my god oh my god and i'm back to being ripped the war took so long that the world no longer cares about how long it took big juicy beautiful russia and holy shit how am i bringing in so much how, how am i i'm just making endless amount i'm already on low taxes i can't i i what, what am I supposed to do with all this money? Great Britain is now seizing pieces of Tibet. Oh no. Ah, uh, the heavenly kingdom is going to fall. But you know what? I think that's, uh, I think that's where we're going to go ahead and end things here today. Yes, Russia is not number one currently here, but it very well easily could be. Meaning all we would have to do is build a fleet and take on Britain as we are easily the largest economy in the world. By far, there is really nothing that can touch us. We are a good 70 million GDP ahead of Britain. We've completely eviscerated the heavenly kingdom on this side, meaning they have no real rivalry or capability to actually be able to take us on. The greatest possible threat that we face is now what could potentially come from Germany, Austria, and the Ottoman Empire with just flooding our line with units. But my friends, if you want to see Russia take on what is essentially the entire world here and play all the way until 1936 for the true capitalist glorious monarchy, then you need to make sure to like this video. If this video gets like what? I'm going to say 6,000 likes, I will go ahead and do it. I have a lot of Russian content apparently that I've been making here, and I even have a history video that I'm getting ready to make. My friends, thank you very much for watching. This has been Stakuyi with a Victoria 3 playthrough. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye, my friends, and glory to Mother Russia.